Assalamu alaikum everyone, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to another episode of Simple Tafsir. In this episode, we'll be looking at verses 15 till the end of Surah Al-Nazi'at. O Messenger, has the news of Musa, his Lord, an enemy Fir'aun come to you? When his Lord, may he be glorified, called out to him at the blessed valley of Tuwa. Among the things he said to him was, Go to Fir'aun, indeed he has trespassed the limits of oppression and arrogance. Then say to him, O Fir'aun, do you want to purify yourself from disbelief and sins? I will guide you to your Lord who has created you and provided for you so that you can fear him and act according to his pleasure while refraining from the things that cause his anger. Musa a.s. then showed him the great miracle that proved he was a messenger from Allah, the hand and the staff. Fir'aun did not do anything except reject these signs and disobeyed the instruction Musa a.s. gave to him. He then turned away from bringing faith in what Musa had brought. And turned his attention to mobilizing his army to overpower Musa. He called out to his people saying, I am your highest Lord. You are not to be obedient to anyone except me. So Allah took him and punished him in the world by drowning him in the sea. And he will punish him in the hereafter by entering him into the severest punishment. Indeed, in the punishment of Fir'aun in this world and the next, there is admonition for the one who fears Allah, because it is he who benefits from the reminders. O rejectors of the resurrection, is your origination or the creation of the heavens that he has created harder for Allah? He raised the peak of the heaven vertically and made it smooth so that there is no break, crack, or defect in it. And he darkened its night when the sun set, while manifesting its light when it rose. As for the earth after he created the heavens, he spread it out and placed within it its benefits. He extracted water from it in the form of flowing springs and made plants grow on it which the livestock graze. And he made the mountains stand firm on the earth. O people, all that is for your benefit and for the benefit of your livestock. So whoever created all that is definitely capable of recreating you. So when the second blowing of the trumpet will come, which will cover everything with its terror, and the judgment will occur.
يوم يتذكر الإنسان ما سعى. On that day, the human will remember what deeds he sent forth, whether good or bad. And hell will be brought and unveiled clearly for all to see. As for the one who transgressed the limits into deviance. And gave priority to this life over the everlasting afterlife. Then indeed the hellfire is his abode he will take shelter towards. And as for the one who feared his standing before his Lord and stopped himself from following his desires that were made impermissible by Allah, then paradise is his abode. He will take shelter to words. O Messenger, these rejectors of the resurrection ask you, When will the hour occur? You do not have any knowledge regarding it that you can mention to them, nor is it befitting of your duty too, because your job is only to prepare for it. The complete knowledge of the hour is with your Lord alone. You are only a warner to the one who fears the hour, because they are the ones who benefit from your warning. It is as if on the day they see the hour for themselves, they will not have remained in their worldly lives except for a single evening or morning. In this surah, once again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the theme of the resurrection and accountability and how we will see our deeds on that day. And if we look at ourselves, we are made of a body and a soul. So our body has needs that it needs to survive, such as eating and drinking. You know, it needs to go out and work to feel secure, to achieve, to enjoy, to have relationships with other people and so on. But at the same time, our souls have needs as well. They need to know Allah, to love Allah, to worship Allah so that we earn his pleasure. And this is the struggle within. As Allah says in this surah, فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَغَى وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا That those individuals who transgress and they choose this life over the next, they choose to fulfill their worldly desires only and they neglect their souls, they neglect what the soul wants, which is to know Allah and to worship Him. These are the people who will meet destruction on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And the self, the nafs, The nafs is naturally inclined towards enjoyment and entertainment and wants to fulfill its desires by all means. And this is the struggle that we face, that if we don't discipline it to do good, it will discipline us instead. Imam Alusi mentions in his tafsir that some of the hukama, the wise people said that if you want to do the right thing, then do the opposite of what your nafs wants. The key here is not to neglect our general needs because we all have these needs and we need to fulfill them. But the key is to fulfill them in a permissible manner and at the same time not neglect our spiritual needs. And this is a constant struggle in our lives between our nafs and regulating it to do that which Allah wants. For example, the nafs wants comfort, but we need to struggle against it in order to learn our religion and at the same time to implement its teachings. It's difficult to wake up in the morning and pray Fajr. 
because the nafs wants to sleep, but we have to strive against it in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that is where success lies. And another example is the self, it wants to be liked, it wants to feel that it belongs. And sometimes we resort to impermissible ways of fulfilling this need. We fall victim to peer pressure. And we have to struggle against this, that we choose to please Allah over pleasing others. So let's look within ourselves and see this internal struggle. You know, who's winning? Is my nafs more inclined towards fulfilling its desires? Or is it inclined towards pleasing Allah? Who's in control? Am I in control or is it in control? Without a doubt, we will be weaker in certain areas. We might lose some rounds. But the key is to learn from them and to see how we can do better. What areas do I need to work on? Because the most important thing is not to lose the fight. So may Allah forgive our sins and give us the ability to control our nafs and to do the things that are pleasing to Him. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.